feeding Scorpio and his right leg gets crushed and amputated. The scene, paramedics record a BP of 68 by 52, heart rate of 122 and a respiratory rate of 36 with a saturation of 45 percentage. Okay, so just to reiterate the story, uh, motors with no helmet, the two pillions, having met with an accident at roughly over 50 kilometers per hour, the two pillion riders are dead, and the rider has potentially head injury, currently grunting, with really bad vital signs, sounding unstable. And a crushed foot. Okay, crushed and amputated foot. Okay, thank you so much. Steve, you're my airway nurse, Peter, so please make sure that uh, the amber bag, the ET tube, and the laryngoscope and other things are ready behind you. You must circulation us, make sure that uh, IV lines and IV fluid are kept ready. You're going to be my hemorrhage nurse. I want you to hand me over the tourniquet. Can you please find the tourniquet? Is it somewhere here? You can see it's under. So make sure that uh, the tourniquet is handed over to me in case there is an arterial bleed. So we've got uh, two minutes to go. We'll be following the HABCDE protocol. So managing hemorrhage first, then airway if we need to intubate the patient as soon as possible. Circulation, uh, sorry, breathing, circulation and then disability for neurological disorders is grunting, is semi-conscious, he might have a head injury. And uh, after that, we'll have a quick exposure to see what else is happening. So we are assuming that this is a low resource center, not the tertiary trauma center of Bangalore Medical College. Just assume that we are in a smaller hospital. So we'll have to stabilize the patient and send the patient across with an ISPA referral to the tertiary care center. Uh, two kilometers away. Is that okay? Thank you so much. Is the patient coming? Oh, well, the patient is coming. Everybody, PP, Thank you. Can I hear the patient? Yes. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank any significant prevention bleeding, any hemorrhage from the tuning uh, from the I can see that there's an amputated limb. Oh my god, there's arterial bleeding coming through. Okay, can you please pass me the tuning aid? There's some arterial bleeding coming through. So first I'll compress to see if the bleeding stops. It's not starting. Pressure bandage is not going to work because an artery which is just retracted back. So I'm just going to put this tuning across. Okay. Sorry, sir. This will be a little bit painful. Sorry about that. So tight, as tight as possible. Really sorry. And I'm tightening my tourniquet, rotating it, and I think I've controlled the hemorrhage. Okay. Please write down the time now. What time is it now? It is 1.12 p.m. Please write down the time and document that the tunica is on. Hemorrhage is stopped. I can hear some funny sounds on the airway end. Yes. Let me just go up and have a look. There is some bleeding below on the floor. What's happening there? So, is, please don't take your hands off. Keep the hands on. Sir, just move the ambu bag. Giving him some pain. Sir, can you hear me? No response. He's not responding to pain. Please carry on bagging him. So, he's not responding to pain means he can't protect his airway. So, we need to intubate the patient. Can you please get... Uh, uh, size 7.5 or 8 tube for me. And uh, where is Chetan? So I need a precise up. 7.5, that is working. Give him 5 milligrams of metasolum, please. Get a line in quickly and give 5 milligrams of metasolum. And uh, please connect him up to all the monitors. So what can we see on the monitor? I'm seeing 120 heart rate. He's uh, got tachycardia. His blood pressure I can't see. Uh, his saturation is only 42 percentage. We are giving him oxygen right now. Temperature, I think it is 35. So, not a very well patient. Can somebody get me the blood pressure as soon as possible? Line in, 5 milligram given. So, that should make his sound go away, no? It is there, yeah. You see? Okay, 70 is not good blood pressure. Okay, so let's try and stabilize his airway. So, can you hold the neck? Can you please come around from the other side? And uh, hold the neck. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you. So, that is. Manual inline stabilization of the neck. Hold the tube for me, please. I'm just going to get in and have a look at whether I can see the cords. So just under the manicular and lifting up. Okay, please give me the tube. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
I can see the cords and I'm just going in just after the balloon goes in. Can you get me a 10 cc syringe please? <coughs> and connect the other back here. Okay. Take the stethoscope from me please, one of you. Where is the... So this doesn't have one of those things. Okay, fine. So assume that we have put in the 10 cc on. And can you hear air entry? Yes? So you can hear good air entry there. Good air entry here? Yes. Any air entry here? Nothing. Any air entry there? Nothing. Any air entry on the epigastrium, please? Nothing. So we are ventilating the left side. The right side is not being ventilated. Can you please uh, fix this tube for me? Let's assume the tube is fixed. So why is there no air entry on the right side? I'm just looking at the trachea. Trachea shifted to the right, left side. And uh, just focusing the chest O oh, is hyper resonant. This is normal resonance. I'm getting hyper resonance there. So there is air trapped pushing everything to the left side. Maybe that's why he's in shock. I need a 14 gauge needle, please. 14 gauge needle. If I get one, I'll go for a big wet long. Let's assume that it is uh, yellow in color. So this is 14 gauge. Taking it out. And I'm just going to put it in the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line. And so a lot of air came out. So that was tension pneumothorax. Now, what we need to do is, please put a little bit of tape over this so this is fixed. And get ready for a chest strain. So chest strain and uh, Chetan, I need chest strain and I need the connecting bag, etc. please. So we've managed airway, airway is stable. Hemorrhage, I'm just checking, there is no more bleeding, so that is stable. I'm looking at the chest, an intervention has been done. So let's look at what's happened with the, I've got a VF running through. Is this patient actually in VF or is the connection bad? Connection bad. Connection is bad. So please keep on the monitor all the time. If it is a ventricular fibrillation, what do we need to do? So we can feed a pulse. We are good. So it is not a ventricular fibrillation. So after my chest intervention, I'm just going to have another listen to the chest. Good air entry, reasonable air entry, good air entry, reasonable air entry, and uh, we need to put a chest in. So you're getting ready with the chest in. Can you please open the connecting bag also? So that is being done. While he's doing that, can you please put in another IV line and we need to connect the patient to IV fluid space. Okay? Bring the lactates, fine and mills, both sides, run it through. Just when you put the line in, first few drops of blood, please send it for grouping and cross matching. Because it is India, please do. A random blood sugar as well. You never know who's diabetic in our country. So if it is hypoglycemia, we need to correct that too. Is that all right? Thank you so much. So that is being done. I'm looking at interventions. My saturation is 70, but it's better than 45. Temperature is still low. Can you please make sure it is warm fluids that you give, okay? Because a trauma and low temperature doesn't go well together. Clotting will get affected. Uh, I think we might have a ventilator. Can you please switch on the ventilator? The black switch at the back. Yeah? Good. So as soon as it is on, we can put this guy on. And the neck, please pass me the rolled sheets. Yes. Thank you for stabilizing the neck and airway for us. Okay, assume this is a hard collar. We've got rolls of sheet on either side. Where's the other one? An unconscious patient usually doesn't move their neck, but we have to be careful not to move their neck. We could induce injury. So, I assume I've just put some tape around him to stabilize his, his head and the neck. Okay. So, cervical spine is also stabilized. And we got a ventilator running now. So let us connect the ventilator to your tube, please. Okay, excellent. So the patient is getting ventilated. Excellent. So we're going for a 400 ml uh, tidal volume and 12 rate. So this should also help us in improving the uh, saturation of the patient. Okay. Okay, that is being done. Is your chest strain ready? Yes, sir. Thank you. Peter, would you mind just holding that on the left side so I can go in there? So we're going into the fifth in the costal space in the mid-axillary line, giving him some anesthetics, and then creating a hole, 
and putting in the uh, <laughs> the chest frame into the right place. Okay, just give it to me, please. So it's uh, when you put it in, try and direct it towards. This end, let's just assume that you've connected it to the underwater sea. Good. So, some blood, and I can see air bubbling, so that is good. Let's put it back. That intervention is done. Can you please tell me what is the numbers now? Temperature is coming up, saturation should come up shortly, heart rate has gone down, and blood pressure uh, it is 86. So, we should be aiming for about 90 uh, blood pressure. So. That is too much, that blood pressure. So can you just slow down on the IV fluids and make it just... Saturation has come up. So it looks like we've jumped two segments there. Uh, so that is, saturation is good. That's good. So intervention is good. Just going back quickly. Hemorrhage control, no more bleeding. That is good. Airway still breathing well. Saturation good. And the patient looking pink. Uh, both sides of the chest moving. After chest strain, I just need to make sure that uh, I'm getting good air entry. Let's assume that is in my ear. Good air entry, good air entry, good air entry, good air entry. So I'm just taking this out now that, now that we... And just close that with a little bit of bandage. Good. Can you please throw it in the sharp slit? Thank you so much. So, hemorrhage control, airway stabilization, breathing we have sorted, the tension hemothorax is treated. You can see a little bit of injury outside. This patient will need a thoracic surgic consult anyway. And uh, circulation, we're giving two units of fluid. Blood pressure seems to have come up. I just need to go and check the abdomen because if you see blood on the floor, look for four more. So it could be inside the chest cavity, we are not seeing a lot moving out here. Could be the abdomen. Okay, there is guarding on the right side, and uh, there, there seems to be some liver condition. So, and I'm looking at the pelvis, lots of bruising in the pelvis. We know that this leg is injured. So can I get another sheet, please? Let's assume that is a sheet. And uh, we will do a pelvic splinting. So that is sheet, rolled, and given under the small of the back. Let's assume that you've got the other end, and you're tying it really tight to keep the pelvis from not moving. So what you don't do is never compress or spring the pelvis. If there is a fracture and a clot, you can dislodge the clot. So a bed sheet tight, really tight around can sort of stabilize the pelvic bleeding. So that is circulation done. Next it is disability, H-A-B-C-D. Disability is neurodisability. Let's have a quick look at the eyes. I'm looking at the eyes. That is dilated and not moving. Can you see, Peter? Here it is four millimeters and reacting to light. So the left side seems normal. Right side is not working. We can see a significant injury there. There are some CSF leak from the right ear. So, we need to increase the blood pressure to 110. I'm hoping that, okay, it is still staying at 114. That is good. Yes. So make sure that the fluids are given adequately till the blood pressure goes above 110. We can't use Bermasi hypertension here. So we've done that. Um, we are a small sender, and the evidence shows that you have scoop and run. We just did what is required to stabilize this patient to keep him alive and stable. Let's now shift him across to. Uh, the bigger center, we'll ask them to do exposure and the rest of the secondary survey there. Is that okay? So I'm going to make a phone call. So mentally, I'm just going to think H, A, B, C, D pattern, what all we did, and uh, how the patient stabilized, and then hand over in the same format. While I'm doing that, uh, just take a history from the family and make sure that there are allergies, and if not so, can we give some broad spectrum antibiotics, cow, cow dung, Traumatic amputation, not a good combination. Unlikely to be immunized, so can we also give uh, tetanus immunization and give two grams of tanexamic acid also to base that. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm going to make a phone call to the trauma center. I know that it's Dr. Vijayabhas already in the trauma center today. I heard that he's on call. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello, hi. This is Dr. Ram uh, calling from Victoria nursing home. I've got a trauma patient. Can I, uh, who's talking? Can you please confirm your name? Yeah, I'm 